Hi, I'm Gareth Jones, and I'm an API architect on the Microsoft Graph. Over the next few minutes, I'll introduce the Microsoft Graph and webhooks. I'll demonstrate how to get started with webhooks and connect them to your application. And I'll provide you with some resources to learn more about webhooks. So what is the Microsoft Graph? Well, the Microsoft Graph, simply put, is a unified endpoint that exposes via REST APIs cloud data from Microsoft's cloud services. As an application developer, you can connect to the Microsoft Graph and authenticate whether your scenarios are personal or work or school-based to a single endpoint. And you can go and get data from a variety of data sources. Um, you can see some of them here in this diagram um, across uh, a variety of Microsoft's cloud services and uh, pick those up from a single endpoint in a consistent, simplified, unified URI namespace that makes things much easier to connect. Also on the Microsoft Graph, we provide in data insights such as the trending around relationship to help make your application more intelligent. The trending around relationship allows you to access the documents that cluster around an individual user on the Microsoft Graph. And now we're adding webhooks to allow you to access change and see that get notified to you in your application. So webhooks are service-to-service -service callbacks for the web. Cloud applications that make use of webhooks can get notified of change in other cloud applications. So they don't have to continuously poll for change. This makes them much more able to make effective use of resources and so be more responsive to users. So some examples that you might like to think of are I could connect webhooks up to emails from users and customers in Outlook and synchronize those with a customer relationship management system. Or I could connect to invites in a shared calendar and connect that to a group chat application so the invites pop up in that chat application every time they appear. So to get started with webhooks, what I need to do is expose a notification endpoint. And you can see that here uh, on my cloud application in your app and the diagram. So that endpoint has to be a public URI. So then to tell the Microsoft Graph which notifications I'm interested in and where to send them, I'm going to create a subscription resource on the Microsoft Graph. So I'm going to create that subscription, and I'm going to pass in the notification URI endpoint. I'm going to pass in the resource I'm interested in. At the moment, the first set of resources that we're making available through webhooks are the Outlook resources of mail, calendar, and contacts. So I'm going to pass one of those in. And I'm going to pass the type of notification that I'd like to be presented with, creation, update, or deletions. And finally, I'm going to pass in the expiration time of my subscription. As soon as I've created that webhook subscription, I'm going to be asked to validate that my endpoint is really live and it's there waiting to receive notifications. So I'm going to get a call back to my notification endpoint to do that validation. And I need to respond to that very quickly um, before Microsoft's going to start sending real notifications to the endpoint. Assuming that validation is successful, when my user then starts to either receive new emails or have new calendar entries or new contacts appearing, then I'm going to start receiving on my endpoint notification objects. Those notification endpoints are going to be JSON objects uh, sent over the HTTPS protocol. So on the Microsoft Graph, we provide create, read, and delete um, operations for subscriptions, as well as an update uh, mechanism to allow you to extend the subscription time. Now, for the Outlook data that we're providing for webhooks on the Microsoft Graph, the maximum subscription time is three days. So you're going to want to make sure to add that code into your application to go and renew that subscription at least every three days. So here's the JSON packet that you're going to be sending and receiving from the subscription endpoint. And you can see I've bolded the first four entries in the packet. These are the four that you'll have to send that are mandatory to create an entry. So I'll be sending that change type of created, updated, or deleted, my URL, my resource, and my expiration time. And you can also send the client state. So the client state allows me to send a, an application unique code along with my subscription, which will then send back from the Microsoft Graph with every notification call. So you can validate that that call is really coming from the Microsoft Graph and is really a call related to the subscription that you created to be sure that it's a, one that you were expecting. OK. So all that said, let's see how that comes together in a demonstration. So I'll switch over to my browser. 
and I've got an application here that's a simple Microsoft ASP.NET MVC application that lets me log in and choose a language that I'd like to have my calendar entries translated into. Imagine I work in a multinational team where everybody speaks different languages and perhaps the majority of the team don't speak the same first language that I do. So I'd like to have my calendar entries when they come in from somebody else in the team translated into a language that I'm more familiar with. So I'm, I've got an app here that uses webhooks to do just that. So I'm going to log in with my work or school or account. I'm going to log in and I'm going to consent here that the application can use my calendar data. And you can see now I've got a drop down where I can choose Dutch, Spanish or French as my language. I'm going to choose Spanish and I'm going to say start translating and that's going to go and sign up for a subscription on the Microsoft Graph. There we go. So the subscription there has been, uh, has been created and you can see that I've got an ID for that subscription and when that's going to be valid until. So let's have a look at the code to do that. So I'll switch over to Visual Studio and here I am inside that ASP.NET application. I'm inside a controller method here um, for my subscription page where I'm creating the subscription. And you can see that I'm uh, making a subscription object. Now this is just a little POCO class that I created uh, to make it easier to create that JSON packet. And you can see I'm setting up all of those same fields that I had uh, in the slide back there. I'm setting up my client state to something that's unique for my application. I'm saying that I wanted a created change type. I'm setting up my notification URL. And you can see I'm using a tool here in an endpoint called ngrok.io. So ngrok's a really great tool um, that you can go out and subscribe to on the web, ngrok.io. Uh, that punches through from the public web to your local computer, your laptop or desktop. And it makes it so that you don't, when you're running tests like this or demos, have to actually go and publish to the web every time. So it really saves you time when you're cycling around. I really encourage you to check it out. It's very helpful. Um, and then setting my expiration time to three days from now, which is the max for Outlook. Uh, and then the resource that I'm interested in is the calendar, so me slash events. Then I'm using a helper function here to go and, um, oops, to go and uh, create the subscription. And you can see I'm just using standard HTTP code here to go and uh, serialize that using JSON.NET and post that out with a normal post to the graph endpoint using my normal HTTP request message code. So assuming that's successful and that post to the graph endpoint works, I'm using my normal OAuth access token to make that post, then I'm going to come back and after that's happened, I'm actually going to save some of that information out to a little Azure table storage database. I'm going to save out the subscription ID, and alongside that subscription ID, I'm going to send out the, save out the OAuth uh, refresh token. Now, this is a very important step, because when the callback from the notification comes in from the Microsoft Graph, that's going to be an unauthenticated call. But I want to actually go and do some real work against the graph to do my translation. So I'll need some saved credentials to be able to do anything useful. So I'm putting them in this table for later. OK. And the final thing we said was when I create a subscription, I'm actually going to go and get a bunch of uh, validation called against me immediately. So let's check out how to implement that. And this is super easy. So I go to my notifications controller this time, which is the controller that's powering my public notification endpoint. And on the notifications controller, I've got a couple of handlers for posts. And the first one is handling that validation. You can see here I've got a parameter for the validation token. And the validation token, I'm simply going to put that into some string content here and echo it out again as the response as quickly as possible. And I need to do that within 10 seconds. OK, so now let's go and actually make a new, uh, a new meeting event for my user and see what happens there. So let's go back to the browser. And this time we'll flip over to the user's calendar and we'll go and make a meeting event for him. So, he's, let's say he's got a big demo coming up. So make a big demo event. And what's happening here now under the covers is I've made that new calendar event. And the subscription is going to, uh, to fire off and it's going to match against the subscription that I created that says, hey, I'm interested in calendar events. I've got a client state that matches. And you can see, and then I'm going to do the translation. And you can see that's already happened there. It's been translated into Spanish, big demo, grand demo. So my business logic has actually kicked in and I've achieved the goal I wanted. So let's see what the code for that looks like. So flipping back to Visual Studio. OK, now here's my uh, body. So I, once again, I've got a post handler in my notifications controller. And what I've got now is another POCO here 
uh, to receive the incoming notifications payload. And this is just a little object that, that maps the array that we send. So we actually send an array of notifications at any one time. We might send more than one. And the notifications contain the subscription ID and the client state and the data for that notification. So what I'm doing here is I'm verifying that it's the same uh, verification token I sent in the client state. So I know it's uh, truly uh, a notification for my IDs that I, uh, I sent, the subscriptions that I created. And then I'm using that subscription ID that comes uh, along with my notification message to go and look up in my Azure table the refresh token that I'd previously stored. Then I'm using the ADAL library, the libraries over Active uh, Directory uh, for Azure, to go and convert that refresh token into an access token, because that's what I need to actually go and talk to the Microsoft Graph to retrieve some calendar data. Now, the notifications that you get from the Microsoft Graph actually don't contain the raw data for the calendar event. They just contain IDs, because it's not a reliable stream of events because the internet obviously uh, isn't a completely reliable medium and your service or our service might be down for brief periods. Uh, so we actually just provide the IDs of events and we'd encourage you to go and read the data back uh, to, so you know that the actual data that you're working with is live data. So what I'm doing is I'm using that ID to go and read the subject of the calendar event here off the Microsoft Graph. And then I'm using Microsoft's translation service to go and translate that into Spanish, combine those two into a multilingual um, subject for that calendar event, and once again use the graph here to go and uh, write that back in to, uh, to the subject. So you can he see here I'm writing to the graph endpoint um, to the event ID and pushing that in um, with my access token. Again, using JSON.NET to serialize that and pushing that in to put my multilingual title back in to the calendar event and so completing my business logic. All right, so that completes my demo where I've shown business logic firing off a webhook that I've set up very easily against the Microsoft Graph. I'm super excited to announce that we'll be making this webhooks technology for the Microsoft Graph available generally around about the time of our build conference. Uh, so you'll be able to access it on the 1.0 endpoint for the Microsoft Graph and use it in your production applications. So I'm going to switch back to my slides now for a moment. So what I'd like you to do uh, is to check out some more of the documentation uh, to get deeper into learning about webhooks. You can find that at graph.microsoft.io uh, and drill deeper and find more videos at dev.office.com and dev.office.com slash build for more of these videos. Uh, you can ask us questions and reach out to the team where we'll be looking for your questions on Stack Overflow using the Microsoft Graph tag. And find us on Twitter using Microsoft Graph and Office 365 Dev hashtags. We'll be adding more data as well as just Outlook data to the Microsoft Graph webhooks over the coming months. And some of that data is already available on our native API endpoints. Uh, for example, OneDrive has webhooks available on its native API endpoint at this time. And you can go and see a video about uh, using that already at aka.ms slash OneDrive webhooks. And those will be coming to the Microsoft Graph sometime in the next few months. Thanks very much for taking some time to learn a little bit about webhooks on the Microsoft Graph with me. I really hope that you get into webhooks and learn to add them to your application. Thanks a lot.